Okay, good morning, everybody. This is Ron Brown, and I will be giving you another talk, and this time is, is on Thanksgiving, the holiday that makes us all Americans. Now, just a reminder, I will give a first part, and then we'll throw it open to questions and comments, and at the end, the same thing. So you can either phone in your comments, but if your microphones are not working, you can type them in as well, and we will respond to them. Now, just a reminder that the election day is today. And in fact, I received a very nice uh, communication from one of the residents up at North Woodmere, Claire Brill, who wrote that following the Holocaust, they arrived in this country and what a thrill it was for her to be able to vote for the first time. I, I guess I can mention who she voted for. She voted for President Truman. And those, this just underscores how important it is to vote, to be a participant in the American political system. Voting is something that not every country has. So often you read that they had an election for a president and he got 99.9% .9 of the vote. And so you know that the voting is a charade. But in the United States, it is a very important part of being an American. And thank you very much, Claire Brill, for that, um, uh, that very sincere um, communication. Now, let's move on to the topic of today, and this is the history of Thanksgiving. Now, most of you know that there are many kinds of holidays. For example, there's a religious holiday. Christmas was originally a Christian holiday. Ramadan, Muslims, Yom Kippur, Passover, these are religious holidays. But we also have national holidays in the United States, such as the 4th of July, Independence Day, President's Day, Martin Luther King Day. These are all national holidays. But Thanksgiving is unique because it combines both a religious aspect and a national aspect. And like every holiday, Thanksgiving has its goals. Why do we celebrate the holiday? What's the purpose of holidays in general? Well, first, all holidays, whether they're religious or national, they show solidarity between a group of people. I remember living in Israel and how important it was to celebrate Christmas among the Christians. We singled out people and you go to a party and say, I didn't know you were Christian, but it brought us together. It identified us. It showed who we were, who we are. It gives us an identity. Holidays are educational. Everybody knows from the Passover Seder that the question a kid asks is, well, how is this evening different from all others? It is educational. And of course, a holiday has to be fun. If there's no food or dancing or fireworks, nobody's going to celebrate it. It also makes us serious. We praise either God in Thanksgiving or on the 4th of July. We venerate the nation or we venerate the people. The celebration of Ramadan commemorates the revelation of the Quran. And it is inclusive, meaning the people who are celebrating the holiday have a common history. And Thanksgiving is the, his, is the holiday of all Americans. Now, I'm sure you know the history of um, Thanksgiving, but I will go over it again. Our English pilgrim forefathers, the Puritans, basically fled England because they were not a very fun people. These Puritans wanted to have a pure form of Christianity, so they banned music, dancing, alcohol, lace, organs in churches, no statues, no hymns. They were a rather dour, a rather uh, plain people, but very fervent in their beliefs. They arrived in New England. Now, of course, they didn't want to go to New England. They were on their way to Virginia back in 1620. Well, a storm arose and it drove them to the rocky shores of what is today Plymouth and Boston. Well, like all good people, they believed that this was God's plan. In November was hardly the time to decide to leave Massachusetts and sail somewhere else. So they got off of the Mayflower and they established their first colony in 
Massachusetts. Now, of course, arriving in America in November, arriving anywhere in the northern climates in November, was hardly the time to plant crops. It was hard. They barely had enough time to fell trees and build huts where they could hopefully survive the ravages of a Boston winter, because they were expected to be in expected to be in rather balmy Virginia, not up in the frigid climb of Boston. And I know Boston well, because I lived there for five years when I was doing my degree at Harvard, and the winters are miserable. But the Puritans decided to stick it out. Now that first winter of 1620 was ruthless. It was brutal. And it was only thanks to the Massasoit Indians, that's where we get the name Massachusetts, Massasoit Indians, who befriended the Puritans. And they offered them the foods that were very common of this particular area. In the upper right, we see the pumpkin, which was a American plant. It was domesticated by the Indians. The bottom in the middle, we see the first cousin of the pumpkin would be the gourds and the squash, which were very useful because they not only had a meat inside, but if you would dry the shell, they became containers for water, for preserving other fruits. In the middle on the right, the potato. The potato was uh, an indigenous American plant that the native uh, Indians of Mexico and down to Peru and up to Boston had domesticated. Below that we see the cranberries. Now you wonder why cranberries were so important. Well, in the long winters of a northern climate, people suffered from vitamin deficiency. So by chomping on a, a dried cranberry, they replenished their vitamin stock and they avoided the disease of um, that ravaged sailors and kept scurvy away. In the middle we see corn. Now we call this Indian corn, but there are all the different kinds of corn that the Indians had domesticated, along with tobacco. I mean, the Indians smoking their peace pipe is legendary. Below that is maple syrup for sugar, which was very important for the tea-drinking Europeans, or even giving a baby um, sugared water as a source of extra nutrients. And of course, the turkey, the American turkey, which the Indians showed them how to trap and how to eat for their um, dinner. So. Due to the Indians, the Puritans were able to survive the very first winter, and it was a brutal winter, that winter of 60, 1620 to 1621. Well, along came summer. Well, the Indians had given them seeds for pumpkins. They had given them seeds for corn and potatoes. They had even started domesticating the wild turkey. They showed them where they could find cranberry bogs to begin the harvest of cranberries in the fall so that their second winter would not be near as brutal as the first. Well, by the fall of 1621, the Puritans were filled with thanksgiving for having survived that very, very first and brutal winter. And so they decided to have a Thanksgiving dinner. Now, of course, they didn't call it Thanksgiving. They called it a dinner of Thanksgiving, thanking God and the Indians for permitting them to survive that first brutal winter. So from the very beginning, this holiday Thanksgiving that we celebrate until today has been marked by cooperation between two very different people. Most of us who have been raised on cowboy and Indian movies and scalping and the Indians raiding settlers tend to forget that at least in Massachusetts this first couple of years there was harmony between the Indians, the Native Americans, and the Puritans. And we can see from the various images, whether it's a painting or a, a cartoon or children's story, 
of the harmony between two very different and very often antagonistic people. And so when little kids dressed up as Indians and pilgrims, this is part of the culture of Thanksgiving. Now, we do know a lot about Thanksgiving because Edward Winslow and many other people wrote in their diaries their accounts of it. It was November, our harvest being gotten in. They invited the great king Massaswat to join, and the goal was to give thanks for the goodness of God, who are so far from want that we often wish you partakers of our plenty. So it was a religious, but it was also a dinner. It was fun. I'm sure the kids were running around and playing. We even know from other accounts who was there, how many children were there, who had died during the winter, the mention of widows and widowers. Now, Thanksgiving began as a local holiday. It was celebrated in Boston and in Massachusetts as their state holiday, their colonial holiday. But it wasn't until George Washington, following his inauguration on April 30th in 1789, decided to proclaim a day of Thanksgiving. When the 13 colonies who had united, written the Constitution, established their first capital in New York City, and George Washington had taken the oath of office, he declared a day of Thanksgiving. And November 26, now we don't know why he chose November 26, but many people argue that even by 1789, people outside of Massachusetts had started adopting this typical New England Yankee holiday as their own. But it once again, due to George Washington, it's established the holiday as a an important American holiday. Now, it was Abraham Lincoln in the middle of the Civil War who declared Thanksgiving a national holiday. Now, of course, every holiday has not only a religious but a political content. This was a holiday which would unite Americans irrespective of whether they were northerners or southerners, whether they were white slave owners or slaves, or Indians or new immigrants or old Yankees, or as we say in New York, old New York Knickerbocker families. It was a holiday which could heal the wounds of war. And as we'll see with other holidays, very often they served a profound political purpose. And don't forget that 1863 was also the year that Abraham Lincoln uh, pr uh, pronounced the Emancipation Proclamation, which ended slavery. So Thanksgiving had a deeper meaning than a religious Puritan meaning, but it started assuming a national character. Thanksgiving was further popularized with the rise of the public school system following the, civil, following the Civil War, where cities like New York and Boston and Philadelphia started organizing public schools, which were number one, obligatory, and number two, free, where the children would start celebrating this holiday of Thanksgiving in the classroom where they started dressing up as uh, even turkeys. Look at the picture in the middle, um, at the top and the, the bottom, the kids dressing up as a turkey, as well as an Indian, as well as the Puritans. So whether they were white or black or whatever color or race or creed, it was a holiday that everyone could celebrate. It, was, it didn't have strong Christian roots because every religious group would be thankful for surviving and arriving in America. And so even today, Jews, Catholics, Protestants, Muslims, Hindus, even a good atheist can get together and find someone to thank 
for a wonderful meal, even if it is only your grandmother or your mother or your sister or your aunt who is going to cook the bird and prepare a meal. It is a holiday of Thanksgiving. Well, another big step in the emergence of Thanksgiving as a national holiday, as a national institution, was an event which took place right here in New York City. And that was when Roland Hussey Macy decided to begin a holiday Thanksgiving parade. And here on the left, we see his brand new store, once again, it was founded in 1858, and his new store on the corner was built in 1902. So in 1924, he decided to have a big Thanksgiving parade, which begins in the Upper West Side, right near the New York Historical Society, continues down 8th Avenue, jumps onto Broadway, and of course it ends at Macy's Department Store. Well, his goal was not so much to celebrate the turkey as it was to announce to New Yorkers and the nation that the holiday shopping season had officially begun. From 1924, don't, don't remember, this is the Roaring Twenties. This is a time when the United States was rich, when everybody had lots of money. Well, of course, this would all end in 1929 with the Great Depression. But still, it was a time when Americans had a lot of money. And what better place to spend your money, Mr. Macy said, than in his new Macy's department store. And so the last float in his parade, beginning in 1924, was, of course, Santa Claus. So the turkey starts the parade, and you have all of the floats and everything. But once it's over, Mr. Macy is telling you, all right, people, grab your wallets, forget about the turkey, and come down and start this mad Thanksgiving Day shopping. And so Thanksgiving became, in one way, a bookend of this emerging American holiday season which begins with Macy's Parade, extends through Christmas, includes um, Hanukkah, includes Kwanzaa, and it ends with New Year's. So this emergence of the holiday season right here in New York. And of course, Thanksgiving was part of this emerging holiday season. Now, it was our good president, Franklin D. Roosevelt, who settled a long controversy. When should Thanksgiving be celebrated? And in fact, very often uh, when I'm teaching this class, uh, teaching this program with my students at Toro College, I ask my students, when is Thanksgiving? And they inevitably come up with the answer, the last Thursday of November. Well, of course, I give them an F for their effort because Thanksgiving is not the last Thursday. Every couple of years, there is a fifth Thursday in November. And God forbid that people like Macy and the other big stores should lose an entire week of shopping profits. And so they appealed to Franklin D. Roosevelt to declare in 1941 that henceforth Thanksgiving will be celebrated on the fourth Thursday of November, even if there is a fifth Thursday in November. So this established once and for all the official date of this national holiday. Now, of course, the day after Thanksgiving is, of course, the beginning of the shopping season. Cyber Monday is the uh, beginning right after Thanksgiving. And, of course, the day after Thanksgiving is Black Friday. Now, you wonder why it was black. Well, to be in the black 
means to be making a profit. And we tend to forget that most of the major department stores in the United States make up to 50% of their annual profits during the holiday season, and Black Friday is the biggest shopping day of the year. In fact, not too long ago, out here in Long Island somewhere, there was a mall that um, was opening uh, Friday morning, and so many people had mobbed in front of the mall to get the bargains and the sales that somebody or maybe several people were stampeded to death. But this is the big day. Cyber Monday has in many ways replaced Black Friday, but still it is the holiday season which begins the day after uh, the Thanksgiving holiday. Okay, so this brings us to the end of the first half of our program. Now, I did receive a wonderful uh, email from Winnie Rosenzweig, who is out there in uh, North Woodmere. And she said, gave an interesting, fascinating little story. She says, I was visiting my grandchild for Thanksgiving, and knowing that he had recently started nursery school, I asked him what he had learned about Thanksgiving. Whereupon he replied, oh, Winnie, Mum, I already know about Thanksgiving. It means that you come to my house for turkey dinner and you bring me presents. And then I say, thanks for giving. Well, this is a wonderful interpretation of Thanksgiving. But here again, it shows how kids view Thanksgiving. It is a festive time. People eat turkey and they bring gifts to their children. I have no idea what I'm going to take to my mother for her Thanksgiving present. Um, she's 96, about to turn 97 in rural Pennsylvania. So my sister and I are trying to decide what kind of present she needs. Um, and she always tells us she doesn't need anything, but I'm sure we'll come up with something. So so, do we, if we have other questions, please feel free to type them in or stories about your memories of Thanksgiving or, or, the, or the, the fondest memory you have of Thanksgiving. So here again, sometimes it's with kids or with grandkids or um, at, a, at a church or at a hotel. I remember a number of years ago when I was living in Moscow, the American embassy announced that anybody who had an American passport could show up at the American embassy in Moscow and they would get a complimentary can of cranberry sauce. Well, of course, it was a trick. I mean, uh, we all showed up. People were milling around out there. But we made contact. Once again, the function of the holiday to show that we are all Americans. Even if we're living in Moscow in 1991 or 1992, we got to know each other. We exchanged stories. They said, oh, poor Ron, he's a single guy living in Moscow. You have to come over and join our family for Thanksgiving. They had managed to get everything. And they said, of course, but don't forget to bring your can of cranberry sauce. So these are the types of Thanksgiving stories that... Um, that we cherish and that we remember. Okay, so um, we will start uh, with the second half. Now, this, I think we do have a question coming in. What did the Native Americans in the Northeast typically wear as clothing? Ah. Very good question. Um, well, animal skins were most important. Uh, the beaver pelt is was probably the most important pelt because it was waterproof. But also bear and deer skin. I remember deer hunting in Pennsylvania where people would tan the leather. It was very soft leather. They could make clothing. The Indians, the Native Americans of the Northeast, did not have co cotton. They did not weave wool because they didn't have wool-bearing animals. But they could also make uh, clothing out of bark, which they would beat into a soft um, clothing, and they could make it. But it was mainly animal skins. 
Now, when the Europeans arrived, of course, they started getting um, cotton cloth, especially for the summer. And that was a big change uh, uh, for the Native Americans. Okay, these are from East Northport, and we have another one. Why is Thanksgiving a two-day holiday? I suppose you mean uh, Thanksgiving Day Thursday and the day following? Uh, is, is that what you mean by the two-day? Uh, if that's the, qu the question, then the answer is, in fact, it's not just a two-day holiday. It is a four-day holiday. Because since Thanksgiving, unlike most other holidays, is fixed on a Thursday, of course, nobody is going to work on Friday, and then you have the weekend. And so it becomes a four-day holiday, which any travel agent will tell you is the most heavily traveled weekend of the year. Since Christmas and Easter and Hanukkah and Passover and these other holidays tend to vary according to either the lunar calendar or the date, um, but Thanksgiving is fixed on a Thursday, so that makes it every year a long weekend. So I just reserved my bus ticket for Wednesday to go to visit my mother on Pennsylvania and warned my brother uh, or my sister and brother-in-law who are driving up from Harrisburg that their traffic is going to be atrocious because everybody is traveling Wednesday and everybody is returning on Sunday. Okay, so let's move on to the messages of Thanksgiving. Now, we saw the history and the evolution of the holiday, but Thanksgiving has become a major holiday for very important reasons. Once again, it teaches about early American history. All little kids learn that uh, not only does grandma bring them gifts on Thanksgiving and they are thank her for giving, but it has American historic roots. Indians and whites and everybody else can get along together. It is a holiday which transcends one religious or ethnic or racial groups. It stresses the fact that the USA is blessed by God. It is a democratic country. And finally, the family is the central institution of the holiday. It is the Thanksgiving dinner with at least two, possibly three or four generations uh, gathered around the table together. So let's take each of these in turn and see how they, um, um, okay, I have to get my clicker back. Okay, I still don't have my clicker. Okay, there we go. All right. Now, teaching about um, early American history. Well, we see on the right the pill, the p point where historians, or maybe not historians, but probably more tourist people and politicians, claim that the pilgrims actually landed. And in 1620, they say they stepped on this famous Plymouth Rock, which is on the left with the date carved into it. And the whole, this founding experience has been celebrated in paintings and uh, movies. Uh, Thanksgiving is filled with movies and books about Thanksgiving, all retracing the founding event of American history. Now, every religion, every nation claims some founding event, whether it's the Garden of Eden with uh, uh, Judeo-Christian and Muslim tradition, or whether it is the birth of Jesus for Christians, there is a founding event. And this is the founding event. We can say that this is where American history began. And at the end of every school year, you see thousands of school kids getting off of their big yellow buses and chartered buses and seeing the actual site where their pilgrim ancestors stepped off of the boat. And we learn about the, um, the Mayflower Compact, the very first constitution, the very first document. And so this is the founding event of American history. 
Well, we also learn about the survival of the pilgrims with the aid of the Indians, overcoming the usual stereotype of conflict with the Indians. The first settlers were good people. Our ancestors, whether we came over on a boat in the 1880s or we arrived last week at JFK Airport, still our, and the pilgrims are our ancestors and they were good people. They came not to get rich. They came not to dominate the Indians, but they came seeking religious freedom. So they were a religious people. That was why they came. They came here seeking freedom, seeking escape from old Europe, old England, where they were being persecuted. Now, these stories, many people would call them myths, but still they are celebrated by kids in school, in kindergarten, movies. Here we see the Cranberry Thanksgiving, a wonderful book for children celebrating Thanksgiving telling the story of Thanksgiving. So like Passover, like Christmas, like Easter, like Ramadan, every holiday has an educational component. Another aspect of the holiday of Thanksgiving is that it celebrates diversity. Chief Massaswat, we see here, sitting on the floor like an Indian, with Miles, uh, with uh, Miles Standish, the leader of the uh, pilgrims, smoking a peace pipe. And here was a sign of cooperation. This was not cowboys and Indians. This was not wars of against the Indians. But this, once again, was the founding experience, showing that two very different people, good, devout Christians, and what the Christians probably thought of the Indians as being pagans. And we tend to forget that the Puritans firmly believed in spreading the Christian message. Now, of course, Massasoit and his Indian tribe have long since disappeared, either um, in later wars against other in English who came over, or migration elsewhere or assimilation. But we do know the language they spoke because the Puritans translated the Christian Bible into the language of the Massasoit Indians. And this is a major um, event because it preserves, once again, a language of the Indians. And it showed that the Puritans were concerned about their welfare. Now, by implication, we can say that this is a holiday that everyone can celebrate, whether you are an old Puritan family from Boston or whether you are a new immigrant just off of the boat. This is a holiday that everyone celebrates. Up in the upper left-hand corner, we see kids dressed up as Puritans. We don't know whether they are Irish who fled the potato famine, Jews who fled Eastern Europe from, from pogroms in Russia or the Holocaust in Europe, whether they are African Americans who were brought as slaves or were later immigrants who settled in New York following the immigration reform in 1965. My own German ancestors who came over in 1810 and later on in the 1850s and 60s. Thanksgiving was a holiday for them as well. And the newer immigrants since 1965, the Chinese coming over, Koreans, Indians, Hispanics, Muslims, Israelis coming over in huge numbers. Thanksgiving is a holiday which does not reject anybody does not deny anybody the right to participate. In 1869, shortly after uh, Abraham Lincoln had declared Thanksgiving as a national holiday, Thomas Nast, the great designer and the great illustrator for the great magazines of the United States. This is Harper's Weekly, one of the most widely read magazines of the time. Uh, published his Uncle Sam's Thanksgiving dinner. And on the left corner, we see come one, come all, inviting everybody. 
And on the right, we see free and equal, because as we see at the table, we see not only Chinese and Spanish and African Americans and probably Irish and Germans and English, all sitting around the table with the turkey being carved up. And at the top, above the man carving the turkey, we see a view of New York City. And if you look closely on the right of the picture, we see Castle Clinton, which is at the bottom of Manhattan. That's where you buy the tickets when you go to the Statue of Liberty in Ellis Island. You see the uh, picture on the right where the immigrants, until the opening of Ellis Island, were passing through. And in the upper left-hand corner, you see in the middle, prime location, the painting of George Washington with two angels on either side. And on the left is Abraham Lincoln, and on the right is Ulysses S. Grant, who took over after Abraham Lincoln. And so this was a celebration when everybody could join in. So from the very beginning, even Abraham Lincoln and Thomas Nast recognized that this was a crucial holiday. Because unlike religious holidays, this was a holiday which was on one side religious because you're giving thanks. But it was secular because everybody could gather together and give thanksgiving. Not too long ago, I gave a talk at the Thomas Nast House in, um, in New Jersey, and this painting was hanging behind me. And I was so impressed by the actual um, original that uh, to say thank you for giving the talk, they came out with a poster almost the size of a um, screen that they rolled up and gave me, and I have treasured it ever since because uh, it is a major event in American history. Now, the other message of Thanksgiving is the USA is blessed by God. As we say, we are giving thanks, not only to your grandmother who brings you gifts of Thanksgiving, but we are thanking God for having preserved the Puritans and in a way for having established the United States. John Winthrop, one of the leading religious leaders of the Plymouth Colony, declared in uh, one of his letters, we shall be, referring to the uh, Puritan colony in New England, we shall be as a city upon a hill. The eyes of all people are upon us. Here we see the governor of Massachusetts, who was governor from 1629 and 49, also a major religious leader, declaring that it was God who brought the Puritans to New England, and it was their duty to create an ideal city, a utopia, and by extension, the United States has, accept, has evolved the idea of American exceptionalism, that we are not like some other little country lost in the middle of the world, but we are a special creation of God, and many people refer to it as a new Israel. <clears throat> now, President Eisenhower, following World War I or World War II, was a firm believer in the divine quality of the United States. When he added in the 1950s, in God we trust to the American currency, he was also the one who added the phrase one nation under God to the Pledge of Allegiance. And he was simply confirming this idea that the United States is, in many ways, a divine creation. On the back of your one dollar bill, look at the pyramid with the eye, Anuit Conceptis, which means uh, a new order of the ages, Novus Ordo Seculorum. Um, and so we see the two slogans, Novus Ordo Seculorum, the new order of the ages, a new creation. And Anuit Conceptis is that he, meaning God, approves of our undertaking with the year 1776 at the bottom of the pyramid. So Thanksgiving, in many ways, was simply confirming this belief that the United States was an exceptional 
country. On the left, we see the Mayflower Compact, November 11, 1620, a pledge to establish a democratic government under God, which was reflected in the Declaration of Independence. Now, of course, at Thanksgiving, we only eat American food. On the left, do not take that to your Thanksgiving dinner because that is French wine. We do not drink European foods. We do not eat apple pie. We eat pumpkin pie. We do not eat oranges and bananas. We have cranberries. We do not eat beef or mutton, but we eat turkey. We don't eat rice. We eat potatoes. This is an American holiday where we celebrate and eat only American food. Now, the family is the central pillar of Thanksgiving. We generally, generally don't go to restaurants. Uh, most people don't do a religious service. You don't go to a club or a bar. You gather around the table. And here is another famous Thanksgiving painting by Norman Rockwell. And if you look closely, you can see there are at least three, if not four, generations gathered around the table. On the right, you see a gray-haired grandmother, and it is another grandmother who is serving the turkey with grandfather and their children and the next generation. So it is a family holiday when colleges are deserted and everybody is taking a bus or a car or an airplane or a train to go home to visit their family. Another Literary Digest magazine um, uh, showing again from uh, 19, I believe that's 1919, another Norman Rockwell celebration of Thanksgiving. Now, I often wonder that woman is holding that turkey that must weigh at least 50 pounds with all the garnishes and everything. Uh, so it is a bit of uh, science fiction, but still it showed that it is a celebration of the woman in the kitchen. I don't know what uh, modern liberated women would say about both pictures featuring the woman doing the uh, cooking, but still it is a family holiday. Again, in modern cartoons and other um, illustrations, we see the celebration of the cartoon, whether it is sitting around with the turkey, holding hands and saying a prayer, or whether it is Peanuts and Snoopy and Tweety Bird celebrating their Thanksgiving holiday, or Donald Duck and all the other ducks. I don't know how the ducks feel about eating their first cousin a turkey. Uh, they might prefer maybe a, um, a vegetarian meal as opposed to that. But still, I mean, uh, we can't uh, pump a holiday too much for significance. But the point remains, it is a family holiday. Now, finally, we see that Thanksgiving has really become more and more important in this rather rarefied political age of today, where the Republicans and the Christian ultra-right has been stressing family values, where we see the cross draped with the American flag, anti-abortion, the Christian coalition protecting Christian family values, which is in a way uh, not in accord with the origin of Thanksgiving being a non being a non Christian holiday or being a holiday that everyone could celebrate. But the Christian right in stressing these new family values, faith and family values, the Republican Club of Pasco County, clearly rejecting the, the gay marriage, clearly rejecting liberated women, uh, really calling into question the, what the meaning of Thanksgiving is all about. Well, at this point, I will once again throw it open to questions and comments. 
uh, once again, if you follow them in, I will respond to them. If you have memories of Thanksgiving, if you can want to, you can type them in. Uh, and here I see we already have one comment. Uh, Rose um, Eskinuts from the Bristol in North Woodmere uh, goes to goes to their daughter every year. Every year her daughter writes about what they puts out the, oh, puts out the same tablecloth. The guests write what they are thankful for. Each year they look back to all previous years to see what they were thankful for. Oh, that's a wonderful tradition. I never heard of that before. But the idea of continuity, because I can imagine over the years, uh, you will have uh, the first little scribbling from a grandchild. Um, you will have the inclusion of in-laws. Someone who had been um, uh, single finally gets married, and then another member joins. It really accentuates the family uh, history, and that's the type of thing that would be almost ceremoniously passed on from mother to daughter or mother to son or one family um, to the other. Now, is North Point, now that is an interesting question. When is Canadian Thanksgiving? If somebody has a, um, a computer handy, they can plug it in. But it is the fall because Thanksgiving has traditionally been associated as a harvest festival. There is also the Korean Thanksgiving, which is a fall um, holiday, mainly bringing in the fruits, the vegetables um, of the um, of the of the harvest. Now here, my assistant just came up with Monday, October 9th is the Thanksgiving in Canada. Um, in fact, in French, since we, we have to acknowledge the French Canadians, it's called Action de Grâce, um, which is the annual Canadian holiday on the second Monday in October. So once again, we see along with the, I know there's the Korean Thanksgiving, and every religion tends to have a fall harvest holiday, which is another aspect I could have brought up uh, to the, uh, the holiday, because all holidays are either ce celebrating, uh, for example, the winter solstice or the spring solstice or the hot time of summer or uh, the Easter and Passover holidays, celebrating the new birth. Why do we have Easter eggs? Um, because they are new birth, the Easter bunny, little chicks. Uh, these are spring holidays when the depths of winter are overcome and a new uh, day is beginning. This is the daffodils. These are the tulips. So, uh, In the Peanuts comic strip, it isn't Snoopy's bird. Woodstock, you're absolutely right. Uh, now, who was Tweety? Tweety is another cartoon character, but you're absolutely right. It is um, Woodstock. So, sorry. Thank, thank you for the um, uh, correction. So, okay. If there are no other questions, I will wish you all a very, very happy Thanksgiving. And um, I always end up with a refrigerator full of turkey because my landlord, who is Chinese and doesn't like turkey, nor does anybody in his family, but the kids demand a big turkey dinner, which, of course, nobody touches. So whenever I go back to, to my apartment from my Thanksgiving with my mother, I always find it crammed full of turkey legs and wings and stuffing and everything. Um, and my landlord leaves a note. He has just as much in his refrigerator. Uh, and so I end up eating turkey for the next six months. But I do enjoy turkey, so I can't complain. So once again, have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. And uh, I will see you at our next presentation. Thank you very much. Goodbye.